Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. What, have I cut out? Yeah, you cut out then. Oh, that's annoying. I was saying some great stuff. Uh, where are you though? Good morning. Good morning? Yeah, started with a good morning. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Go on. I'll tell you why, and I don't know if you noticed, but our episodes now drop at 6 a.m. Yep. Due to request from your mother. My mum, yeah. She said, on Thursday, I'm aware Drum and Drummer's coming out, and I wake 8 up. 8 a.m. is too late. 8 a.m. too late <laughs> for my mum. You know, she's up. She starts work at 8, I think. So she's like, oh, it's too late. So we were so like, I've, for Sandra, I've changed the whole system. There you go. Well, I just click a different time. <laughs> Because I it, think I went, she said even seven would work, and you went six? Yeah. <laughs> I'll do six then, shall I? Yeah. This yeah. is where we get. I don't want to do it at seven and then go, do you know what? 6.45 would be perfect. Yeah. Just six. Just six. There you go. Then it's out. You and know if you're I mean? up before that, you've made bad decisions in your life. Well, sometimes I've been up on, most times, I'm up on a Wednesday and it'll get to midnight in, you know, the early days of the pod, and I'd be like, oh, I wonder if the new episode's out yet. And I never even knew when it dropped. Mm. But, um, but it is 6. 6 a.m. now, Thursdays. Yeah. Yeah. So good morning if you listen to this as yeah. it's come out in those hours. Yeah. As I know yeah. people do on car yeah. rides to work oh, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> keep your eyes on the road if you are trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Because you'll, you'll be laughing so hard... <laughs> tears streaming down your face like i can't even see where i'm going and uh yeah. do pull over if that happens from the bats um were you gonna say same george what have i cut out yeah you cut out then oh that's annoying i was saying some great stuff uh, where are you though nah, anyway, anyway we've got another guest we've got another guest to get us through these january blues <laughs> george the, pray tell the guest today is daphne who I've met once before, and... I, I like how you didn't attempt her surname. No, did not. Go on. Cosca Redu. Cosca Redu. Very good. Yeah. Um, well, I think Dean just calls her Daff, so he doesn't Easy. bother with the whole first name. Because <laughs> um, that's complex. <laughs> <laughs> it's for Dean. Uh, stop making every episode about Dean. Um, so I met her at one of her gigs It. When she was playing with eighties hi fi and um and she's one of those people who like Connor Griffiths and like Laurie Miller and like Curtis, I guess, guests we've had on in the past. I vaguely know, but not really. So the podcast is actually a great way to, you know, meet someone for the first time and make a new friendship. Hopefully. And it's good for their careers really to come it's on good this for show. Their careers. Good for our careers. What good a for boost. everyone's careers. <laughs> Being um, on Southern England's top 50 drum podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great session drummer, great drummer, great all round person. Uh, tours a lot with a band. Tours a lot with a band. From Greece. From Greece. Originally. Yeah. yeah. You know, there are a lot of chat. great talking points going into this. Yeah. You know I mean, should we just dive on in? Let's go for As it. They say. Yeah, let's just stop beating really around the bush and just. Yeah. <laughs> Get straight Woo. in there. That's Woo. Us. That's, that's, that's us diving off the board into the pool of... <laughs> into the pool of conversation. Diving off the board of waffle into the pool of chat. Yeah. There you Here go. we go. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you. This is Ben. I don't know where his... Hi, Ben. I'm oh, Daphne. How you, how you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Wicked. Thanks for coming on. Daff. Oh, honestly, pleasure. Thank you for having me. That's all right. How was uh, how was your time in? Where is it? Greece. Greece. Yeah, all it was right. really good. It was it was very very good. It's always um, not long enough, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. Um, family time is never enough for me. We're we're, we're all very close. So, um, I mean, I'm I'm mostly away. So I I try to go back for like Christmas for a couple yeah. of weeks, um, and then summer whenever. Yeah. I'm available basically. But yeah, it was lovely. The oh, weather nice. was amazing. It was sunny all the time. Really? Uh, not not liking this weather here at the moment. No, I know, exactly. <laughs> not a fan. 
I always um, forget that. I know it sounds stupid, but I'm like, oh yeah, other countries are hot in December. And it's yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, it wasn't supposed to be that hot. Um, it was. It's quite. It's like not really normal December to be like twenty degrees. Yeah, it was proper spring weather, but um, you know, it it was nice because I left England with minus six Celsius. <laughs> And I was like, this is, it was just meant, it was so cold. Yeah. Isn't it? Um, so yeah. But yeah, how was yours? Nice one. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> same old, same old. Um, first of I mean, where did the music start? I mean, I assume, was it drums you started with in Greece? Or? No, actually. Um, so it was classic. It was, uh, it was classical guitar when wow. I was seven years old. Uh, yeah. Proper like, uh, Spanish, like proper finger style guitar. Yeah. Um. Uh. Which are uh. Which I enjoyed very much. And then uh, when I was ten, I started drum lessons. Mm. Um. Got the inspiration from my dad, uh, who is a drummer himself, and he was just like bashing on the drums uh, down the basement of our house. And then one day I just uh, went downstairs and I was like, show me something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he did. He showed me like the classic kick snare groove, and for some reason I just picked it up straight away. Um. Yeah. And then yeah. Yeah, was he a, was he a professional or just did he just play for fun? Play for fun, I would say. He had a band. Um, I remember just being very young, um, and we would just go to his gigs, um, to watch him play. And uh, you know, I think I was very young by like then, but it did form this sort of a, like the love of performing. Uh, I think that's where I get it from. Um, because I, I I love being on stage and playing drums and you know expressing myself through my instruments and stuff. So. I think I definitely got that inspiration from my dad. Um, and then as soon as I started lessons, I just wouldn't stop. <laughs> I was just yeah. so excited to just, yeah, hit the drums all the time. Did you keep with the Spanish guitar or was it like, okay, drums is now? Um, so I did for a little longer, yes. But um, as soon as I learned to play chords and learn all the chords and stuff, then I stopped because I felt like there was nothing else to learn. And because yeah. then as I started writing songs and stuff, so I was just mainly playing chords. Um, if you ask me to play anything uh, on fingerstyle guitar now, I don't remember. Uh, that was going to be the next part of the podcast. <laughs> I was going to ask you to play some fingerstyle. Uh, yeah, no, definitely not. I can play pro- like I can play guitar, but I can't play Spanish guitar or like any classical guitar <laughs> anymore. Okay. I haven't done that in years. But um, you know, it did. Uh, you know, I I generally generally have a love uh, for music from a young age and again i think that stems from my dad because you know he he would just like put music loud in the house and would just dance with my sister and just like you know he has this room down the basement full of like thousands of vinyls and cds that he's yeah. been collecting over the years so i just have loads of memories of him and me in that room and him just showing me music and being so passionate about music yeah. so um you know Oh, he's that. definitely, yeah, he's definitely where, where I get it from. <laughs> so from age 10, learning drums to mm-hmm. when did you move to Brighton? Was that When I was 18. Was that for BIM or was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so I was taking lessons, uh, drum lessons back home. And then the music academy I was studying uh, at, the my drum tutor started like collaborating with Rock School of Music of oh. London, I think it is. Mm. Um, so every summer some examiners will come from London to drama, my hometown, um, to assess. And, you know, I will be learning the grades, grade three, grade four, grade five, whatever it is on uh, guitar, guitar, drums and piano, I think it was, maybe vocals as well. So, yeah, I started studying for that. Um, and I think my, my drum tutor uh, sort of introduced me to BIM because I think it just sort of happened. There was a collaboration between Brighton I can't remember what it was before it was BIM, but there was a collaboration between two um, colleges or universities right. and it, it became like BIM basically. Yeah. And it was very modern. And I remember just watching YouTube videos of it and stuff. And um, yeah, Madame Turo kept pushing me to go abroad basically. And I, I really wanted to as well. Um, if you if you ever came to my house between the age of 13 to 18, my room was like, literally london <laughs> it was just so funny saying it now i was obsessed with england yeah. for some reason my curtains were uk my sheets were uk i had a hand built big ben on my desk <laughs> wow. um i don't know what sort of i i, I idolized it so much for some reason 
I don't know why it was just this dream that I had to go there and just was play music. Lot, so was there a lot of kind um, of do you think that was musical related at all? Like you know, music from England that reached over into Greece or I I don't know if I'm honest with you. I can't I don't have the memory of where that started, if I'm honest. Um I just remember being really obsessed with it. Um and then as soon as I got introduced to BIM as well, because I, I, I initially was looking to go to BIM London because London was like my dream yeah. city that I, I always wanted to go and study at, basically. Um, but yeah, I think definitely starting looking at, at the opportunity of going out and studying there made it a bit more uh, exciting. Yeah. Not that it wasn't already, but, you know, I was just super excited. But then basically how I ended up in Brighton is one of the examiners that came from rock school um, and um, he was just there, we were just chatting about me going to BIM London and stuff. And he said, I'm from Brighton. Um, it's uh, literally an hour by train from London if you want to go to London quite often and stuff. And it's more like a student town, that like city as well. And it's just like, um, it's got the sea and the seafront and stuff. So, you know, and I saw some pictures and I just like, oh, actually, that looks really cool. So, um, and because London was very expensive. Um, so I did start looking at houses and, you know, the journey from where I was supposed to be staying to the college was like an hour and a half of with the yeah. tube and stuff. So, so yeah, it just sort of became this idea of, um, Hey, it's cheaper. It's, uh, by the beach. It's only an hour away from London if I want to go to London so much. Um, and then, yeah, that's how I started looking at Brighton and I'm here now. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so. Have you been in Brighton since you've been 18? Yeah. Oh, yeah. amazing fantastic yeah yeah and i guess i'll say another thing it's like i guess that's the perfect mix then because if you're already obsessed with england and london and you're like oh mm. and i can also play drums there you know then it's like oh my god yeah literally i had um throughout my years uh, at bim um i had literally mo- i still have it and i still get it now um where i have moments where i'll play i'll be playing a gig or i'll be in a rehearsal and then it's like i just I don't know. I don't know how to call it, but I sort of like see myself doing that, and I'm almost in it. I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm yeah. in England and playing music because it was such a big dream when I was younger. Yeah. Um. And you know, even now, seven years on, um, I still, but you know, when I'm touring, and you know, I did um that European tour with uh, with Click Trip uh last year, but well, we'd say last year, but yeah, um, November last year. Um, and I still had moments where we'd be in like Vienna and I'd be like, am I really just traveling around playing music? <laughs> it's yeah. still, yeah, well, it's, such a it's jump, still like so insane. You know, I, it's, it's, I've never been to Greece, but I can imagine the jump from going to Greece to Brighton to play music is more than my jump. From oh my God. Yeah. Portsmouth, which is an hour from Brighton. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's crazy. So yeah, I can imagine you have those sort of, I guess an out of, body experience is that what people say uh, that's like, that's exactly that what it is yeah that's that is a word thank you i was looking for that <laughs> so, but let's talk about that let's talk about the tour because i was gonna yeah talk about what's how do i pronounce the band name it's clit drip yeah i don't want to get it wrong but um it was, uh, <laughs> okay. I, I had to, i had to listen to the band how would you let's talk about the sound first of all how would you describe and it's the hardest question in the world but how do you describe <laughs> It, it really yeah, is, yeah. but I think after like five years, uh, we sort of like end like uh, the end result is electro punk that we usually yeah. go for. Yeah, because um, there's so uh, so Scott uh, who's playing guitar in the band. Um, he's you know everything you hear music wise and melody wise is him, mm. um, which is mad if you think that it's just one person that's doing that. So um, you know he's really his approach is he's treating his guitar as a synth through his yeah. pedals and he's trying to create all these sounds and which is pretty cool and it's um it's basically what what got me wrapped into it basically so because uh when we were i think second year of uni because i knew scott from first year because we played uh guitar and drums for um for a songwriter i'm like playing covers and and uh stuff like that but um <clears throat> so i think i think he just uh came over once after a lesson and he was like you know what i've got these riffs on the guitar that's probably like drum and bass and i just wanted to go mental on the drums and like have fun and i was like say no more yeah, <laughs> i'm yeah. there i'm there already tell me the time and the place yeah. um and uh yeah literally first practice uh we came up with a song and it was just 
the chemistry we had and we have had since then is it's just uh it's amazing it's just so easy mm-hmm. the communication we have between us music wise is um yeah it's pretty yeah. cool and um then annie came along and it was literally the cherry on top because she's just she's just so talented and so great at what she's doing and um, we all just blended together uh quite quickly and so easily that it just yeah it just worked straight away yeah. Which yeah. I think it's it's such a great thing because, you know, I've played with many people, especially for uni. I've played with so many different people and so many different musicians, and I've played in different like different genres of music and stuff like that. And um, you know, I know how it is to not click with the other person or the other band member, or you know, trying to like come up with a groove, or you know, with a song generally, and then for it to be quite hard because there's no communication or chemistry there. And, um, you know, I, I do, I feel very uh, lucky to yeah. have that with Scott and Nanny because it's, you know, it's quite rare, but I believe mm. for some reason. And I think yeah. you said it there when you, when you work with someone who goes, just go mental or just do your own thing yeah. to be creative. It's like, that's because, yeah, I was at BIM and sometimes you play for a songwriter and they go, just give us some, you know, laid back, real simple beat. And you're like, okay, fine. But then when you yeah. kind of you're let loose, that's where mm. the magic happens. That's where you can really create something that's like, I don't know, more fun and more real. Definitely, I definitely. I think I think that's why I, I'm I love Clip Trip so much, is literally it's my little baby, because I just, you yeah. know, we all we all I'll write the parts and I can I can get really creative and sometimes Scott comes up with some riffs that they're so, you know, inspiring for me to just challenge myself as well. Yeah. Uh, rhythmically um you know i do love doing sessions as well like you know i am a session drummer on the side as well and love that i have played with um songwriters and stuff and i do love the idea of being told hey this is a song what would you play on this yeah and just you know try and like play for the song rather than for me yeah um that's generally my approach yeah definitely so let's talk about that tour where mm-hmm. did you go in the, uh, the you go, so Basically, what happened, we got um, as main support uh, for a band called The Stat. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are from Holland. Yeah, and they're quite big in Europe. Um, and we also did the UK for the October last year, mm. uh, about eight, seven to eight dates, I think it was. Um, I had no idea who they were, if I'm completely honest, before the tour. And then literally after both tours, they're my new favourite band. And yeah, so we went, um, if I remember correctly, we did uh, Manchester, Bristol, what else was it? Newcastle, maybe? I actually can't remember, but we went around the UK and uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, it was quite challenging in in a matter of where, because they have so much equipment. They have mm-hmm. their own lights, they have uh, the full back line, they have uh, so many pedals and synths and stuff. And um it would all of the gear on stage. So we would then have set up another full back line, <laughs> full drum kit, four cabs, uh, hit Scott's pedal board, and then some, somewhere will be Annie <laughs> in whenever, wherever there was space. So that was, that was the challenge in the beginning, but we sort of got used to it because we, we are quite quick as a band to uh, setting up and packing down and, you know, mm. just, yeah, being quite effective in that, in that matter. So, um, you know, in the beginning it was a little bit like, uh, you would look at the stage with all the equipment and you were like, where, where are we going? Yeah. How are we going to, how are we going to do this? It seemed impossible. And then you would do it and then it's fine. But, you know, all the shows were amazing. Um, we played uh, Thecla in Bristol, which is a boat, which I had no idea was a boat. And it was quite mental playing on a boat. <laughs> so I was like, what if someone started jumping and then the boat's just like <laughs> rocking from side to side. Yeah. Um, but it was actually quite cool. It was really cool being on there. Yeah. And then November um we went in europe and that was amazing uh first show was in romania uh which is a 24-hour drive from brighton so we were like two days we started driving two days before the show so we have two 10-hour days and then on the day of the show we have like a nice short five-hour drive (laughs) so we are quite a bit fresh (laughs) um but it was long loads of hours in the van but it was absolutely amazing um we did two shows in Romania, we played Bulgaria, we did Budapest, Vienna, did two shows in Germany, and then we also played Switzerland as well. Right, I can't not discuss it. Uh, 80s hi-fi, let's talk about that. <laughs> yes. 
um, the Aegis Hi Fi is a very fun project yeah. that started um, February 2020. We did our first gig and then the world shut down. I was going to say, <laughs> so, yeah, timing wise, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. the timing. Probably your fault, was, then, uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably mine, yeah. Hang on, we need to. No, there's this new 80s band. We need to just. Everyone, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone stay inside for a good couple of years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was um, obviously we, st we started generally started from scratch, I think, after the pandemic, trying to build back up. You know, I don't think you can go wrong with 80s music. Everybody yeah. loves 80s. So, uh, you know, it's super fun just being behind the drum kit and just playing the sort of songs and yeah. um, doing backing vocals. And, you know, it's just generally super fun. And uh, we are hoping to, to make it as big as it can get, really. Mm. Um, I'm looking to get uh triggers for my acoustic drums because then i think that's going to take the sound to the next level being able to have the exact 80s kick drum or the exact yeah. 80s snare you know because it's quite a distinct sound you know the yeah. 80s drums so yeah i'm hoping to do that this year at some point it's yeah. it's just it's just super fun it's just super fun it is a fun gig because i've yeah. stepped it a few times and yeah it they is just, they just completely cut out the ones that you sing they because there's running up the hill <laughs> And then there's two Fleetwood Mac ones and they go, yeah. there's not even an even like entertainer that I might sing those songs. You know, because <laughs> what's the point? Um, so, I know yeah, you want whenever, to though, George. I know you uh, want Oh, I really want to. Yeah, I'd, love, whenever, I'd love to see you doing Running yeah, Up That Hill. Yeah. Running Up The Hill. Because you do that one near enough on your own, I would say, because I saw you guys, I can't remember, a few months ago. And mm. uh, yeah, running up the hill. Dean, just the guitarist who we have mentioned on the pod before, he just sort of he just wandered off. He went and got a drink. I don't think Tom was singing either. I was like, this, nah. is, this is now Daphne's gig. But like, yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah. It's just, it's always really funny because I because I would do uh, these these three back to back. Yeah, just makes sense. So I think it's running up the hill. Then it's uh, everywhere, and then it's uh, little eyes. I think. Yeah. So yeah, just Tom just like. Leave the stage, go to grab a drink <laughs> <laughs> for the, the next seven, eight, eight minutes. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's I do I do really like uh singing as well. It's something that I I I've been doing since I was very young. I'm a very amateur singer, but I just I just love expressing myself through that. And because my first instrument was guitar and then I started writing songs and stuff, it was just my um it's a complete different way of expression for me. Yeah. playing guitar and singing and writing songs uh than, than, than drums yeah um you know they, they both help me a lot to express myself but in completely different levels mm. so uh so yeah it's a super fun being able to do both at the same time <laughs> just yeah, like yeah, singing definitely. and drumming um, how, do, how do you find doing that because I, I occasionally do backing vocals in one of my bands mm -hmm. and there's some bits i find i can the, the separation between voice and limbs Mm. it's fine but then there's some bits it's like there's just absolutely no chance i can yeah not without proper practice is it something you can just do like you sing and play at the same time does that work for you yeah i think so it's some i don't know i don't know how i can't remember how that started again but it was just this thing where um i would just play along to my favorite songs when i was younger and then i would just like also sing and it'd be that obviously there were some there are some songs that the drum part is so complex that I have to think what I'm playing and then I might be losing my the singing part or the mm. rhythm of my singing or whatever. But, you know, if I, if I sit down and actually practice it, then, you know, I, I will be able to do it at some point. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, with, with the sort of songs, especially with like the ones we do with the 80s hi-fi, the drum group is quite simple in that way. Actually, I will say running up the hill because the pattern of the tom is... Uh, and I can't do that while singing. So I've simplified it to just eighth notes on the floor. So because I think Dan, the keyboard player, and the he's made he's basically composing all the backing tracks and he's like the mastermind behind everything. Um he's put the the tone pattern at the backing track generally. So I have a bit more freedom to um yeah, make it a bit more simple for me. Speaking of gigs though, I wanted to discuss the um Martin Rossiter Gene reunion gig. Uh, would oh, yeah. you say biggest show you've done? Would you say? Oh yeah, that that was the biggest show of my career. Yeah. Yeah. So explain what it was. Um. So I think it was 2018. Uh, mm. We were at the end of term gig at Vim, and then Martin 
um, just sort of sat me down and was like, look, in two years, I'm going to be 50. I want to do the very last gigs of my career and I want to be my drummer. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to be your drummer out of every single drummer you've ever met in your entire life? So it was just, yeah, I was obviously very um, honoured that he even asked me to do this. Um, and then, yeah, we just started practising a couple of years after. Um, great songs, um, super fun to play. It was a bit challenging because obviously I had to learn about 37 songs, I think it was, because it was going to be a two-hour gig, I think. Right. 32 or 37, so around 30. In the 30s. In the 30s, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, but it was it was actually quite um, quite fun to do that because obviously he will, he will write chord charts and I would have my notes and, you know, after a while it just becomes muscle memory. And um, I'm, I feel I'm very lucky in the part of like, I can memorize things quite easily, mm. which is very helpful with the sort of gigs because there's so, so many songs. Mm. So yeah, but we, we practiced a lot. And then I think initially the gig was going to happen June, 2021. Yeah. Where was the show again? The... So the show happened at O2 um, at Forum, Kendish Town, yeah, that eventually, was but it was initially at Shepherd's Bush. Right, okay. Um, and I remember the day where the general sale tickets uh, went out and it sold out in five hours. <laughs> and that's like 2,600 people. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> that's when I started freaking out. Yeah. I, don't gen I don't generally get nervous before I play. No. I don't have that. But... It was the first time in my life that I had that anxiety of I'm going to play in front of so many people. I mm. can't mess this up. <laughs> how, how long before the gig was that that they sold out? When did that anxiety start? Ooh, um, good question. I can't remember, actually. But it was it was at least three months before. Right. OK. Wow. So it was quite it was a long time before the show. Is it um, then like every day it's somewhere in your mind you're thinking oh i have to oh yeah of, yeah yeah that that, wait, not, not not that sense it was i was very excited for it yeah um because it, it was it was going to be another sort of dream come true because i mm. you know since i was younger i've been watching shows and i've been watching like you know photos of like a drum kit and like thousands of people in the yeah. crowd and i was like oh, i hope that's me one day yeah, 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 <laughs> and yeah. you know it wasn't like you know, for me, 2,600 people is a lot when I'm just playing in front of 600 was my max, I think, at that time. Mm. So when we eventually, because the show got rescheduled and we eventually did in November 2021, I just remember walking in the venue, like at the, on stage and looking at the venue and I was like, this is insane. Mm. <laughs> I was just like so excited for it and also so nervous for it. Um, but I was just like, this, this whole room is going to be full of people. Yeah. Um, and it's that feeling where we were backstage and we had no idea how busy it was. And then you just like, okay, you're on stage now. And you walk on stage and you see a sea of people. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, it was, it was magical. It was so cool. It was so cool. I'm very, very privileged to be able to, you know, have been able to do that. And for Martin to ask me to do that and to trust me with it, mm. um, um, yeah, def definitely, definitely a biggest highlight so far. I saw that you were recently endorsed by Natal. Yes. Which is amazing. I mean, we'll talk about what the kit <clears throat> is in a sec, but um, first of all, how did that endorsement come about? So basically, uh, it was uh, December 2021, mm. um, and we were playing we were, uh, in Bristol with Clidrip. It was the last last show of a tour. We were part with uh, Svalbard and Harriet, mm. um, and it was the last show of the tour, basically. And um, the the front uh, front person of Harriet, Debbie, her boyfriend came to the gig. And it was the first time that he saw Clidrip live. And then um, he just came came over after I played and he was like so impressed. And he was like, I loved it. You guys are amazing. Like, you're such a great drummer. And, you know, I was like, oh, thank you. And he was like, I work for Natal. And, you know, you would be 
perfect for a real roster. We'd love to have you on. Like you can pass your details on to our artist liaison, and um, yeah, you can have a chat. And if you're happy and you like it, then you know we'd be glad to have you on. But it was such. I have to mention it was such a frantic uh, night that one because what I had to do was we had to play, pack down straight away, and then drive back to Brighton to catch a coach for 3 a.m. because I was flying home to Greece at 6 a.m. the next day. Wow. So I was like properly like trying to pack down whilst I'm talking to Harry, that this guy. And he was like, you know, as soon as you pack, I'll let you pack down, just come outside after we'll have a quick chat. I was like, yeah, no, I'm in a rush, but I'll try and come out and stuff. And um, it was very stressful trying to get out but on time. And um, I didn't find him. Uh, when I went outside and I was like, I don't have time. I was like, I'll message him. And I messaged him straight away. I felt horrible. I was like, I'm yeah. so sorry. I really have to go. I'm going to miss my flight otherwise. Um, and I, I sent him, yeah, I, I sent him uh, my details. And then he was like, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. I'll pass on your details and stuff. And hopefully I'll see you soon. And then I sort of forgot about it over the Christmas period because I was just back home. I wasn't even thinking about it. And then I think uh, – January um, 2022, I think it was like first or second week of January, um, George uh, Frederick, the Yashford Asian of Natal, uh, emailed me. And I was like, oh, my God, he actually did pass on my details. <laughs> That's amazing. And, yeah, we just had a chat. He was very happy to have me on. He just basically offered me uh, to come up to Milton Keynes uh, to the um, HQ to try some drums out. And I did, and it was amazing because basically Natal is part of Marshall, um, so I went up to the Marshall Amplification uh, headquarters uh, where they have the studio as well, and um, yeah, so it was uh, it was amazing just trying different drums and having like, talking about drums and like he uh, took me down to the warehouse to see how they were made and stuff like that, and um, I remember just walk, walking around the warehouse and um, there were a bunch of drums on shelves and I saw this one uh, I think it was a rock tom. And I was like, that color is incredible. <laughs> and that's the color that I chose for my drum kit. And it's uh, cerulean blue, which I've never Ooh, heard of before, but it's no. absolutely gorgeous. So let, I mean, um, let's talk about, yeah, sizes and yeah. everything. Uh, yeah, I guess how does, how, how much freedom do you have in terms of what you can pick and choose? Yeah, I'm um, allowed to take 20 low toms, for example. <laughs> if I wanted to, yeah. um, I guess so, yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, um, George is absolutely amazing. He's, um, he was like, you know, whatever, whatever you like, just let us know. And um, yeah, we'll basically just make it for you sort of thing. And um, I tried different sizes, uh, or not different sizes, different uh, types of wood, because uh, they have the more... Uh, the more popular uh, series is the Cafe Racer, which is made from tulip wood, right. uh, which is really good wood. And then their top range is like uh, walnut, uh, which I played as well. And um, actually, um, George was an absolute legend and he shipped over a walnut kit for me to record my second album with Clitrip back in uh, well, last, last year, spring last year, because it just sounds incredible, basically. Um, but yeah, so I sort of, I, um, I didn't want to experiment with sizes a lot cause I was very happy with what I've been using. So what I have is a 12 inch rectum, 14 inch floor tom and a 20 by 18 kick, mm. um, which is uh, the 20 by 18 kick I think is the one. It's just the, the exact amount of punchiness and like warmth that you want from a kick drum. And, um, I don't think I can ever go bigger than that now i've played obviously i've played bigger drum um kick drums and smaller ones as well but for what i want and the sound that i want especially for clear drip um the 20 by 18 is like perfect yeah um and then i used to use a 13 by six and a half snare but then that sort of died and then i got a 14 by six and a half snare which i've been using for ages it was a tama tama metalworks black snare cool. um which sounded amazing for I wanted to do for Clear Trip. But uh, Natal have this uh, beaded steel snare. It's 13 by 7. And it just sounds so good. It sounds absolutely amazing. And um, that's the one that I got uh, for my for my setup now. 
Yeah. What were you using uh, before the tile? Uh, so I had this PDP drum kit. Um, PDP, I think, is like the uh, it's, it's by DW. Yeah. Right. Like like they made just cheaper uh, drums and stuff. And um, I it was my very first drum kit, um, which my drum tutor from back home gave me. Um, so he shipped it over from Greece to here when I was first year of uni. And um, I've just been using that ever since. So um, then that's, that's the size that I drunk it had. So I never played with a 20 by 18 kick before, a 14 inch floor tom. Like initially that's, that seemed so small. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously <clears throat> the more I played with it and I used it, it just sort of like it grew in me and um, it sounded exactly how I wanted it to sound. It's a funny thing with sizes, with drums, I've heard people say it's like, People think bigger is better sometimes for big rock yeah. shows, but they say like the amount of times you have to dampen something anyway. It's like oh, you yeah. might as well just get a smaller drum anyway, you know, like Oh, uh, you'll you'll be actually surprised how how uh thick sounding can a fourteen inch floor tom sound. Yeah. It's just it's just so it will sound bigger than you won't believe it's a fourteen inch floor tom, basically. Yeah. Um and I've had loads of people telling me that uh even playing live or recording in the studio. It just sounds pretty good, and mm. you can you can get it quite low. You know, some people have this mis, mis, misconception of oh, it's smaller, so it will sound like yeah. the tone of it is going to be higher. But that's just that's just not true. And um, yeah, the twelve the twelve inch Raptor is just a standard, you know, um, heavier uh, from for the sound that I want to go for for clear drip because I mainly use this drum kit for my band. So it's it was just. Yeah, it was because my very first drum kit had those sizes, um, and the more I played it, the more it just grew in me. And um, yeah, I just I just didn't want to go, didn't feel the need to go bigger in terms yeah. of sizes. Um, they did send me a sixteen inch floor tom as well, which uh, when I first ever set up my new brand new drum kit to try it out fresh out of the box, I put a floor tom, uh, put the sixteen inch floor tom on my left hand side. Just okay. next to my hi hat, and then obviously the 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 other floor tom was where it was supposed to be. And um, I always wanted to have a floor tom next to my hi hat yeah. to be able to play with my left hand. So yeah, who knows? Maybe this year yeah. I'll change my setup and I'll have another floor tom on my yeah, left hand side. Why we'll not? see. If you've got it, yeah, you might as well take it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> drum heads. I was going to talk mm-hmm. about as well because I yeah. saw you're also endorsed by Codehead Drums. Um, yeah. How did that come about? Were you using them before the endorsement? And then I was actually. Um, and the reason uh, being was because they were so much cheaper mm. than uh, Evans or Remo. And being a student, I was uh, couldn't afford to get because yeah. an, an Evans kick drum head is like 35, 37 quid. Well, Quite mad. We, sorry to interrupt. We've talked about this a lot. And it's like the thing about drums is like you have to constantly like keep them going you know we've said like oh, guitarists yeah. and stuff they just they buy a guitar and then they've got the guitar you know you might have to buy strings sure but saying mm. like to be a drummer you have to just sustain it and there's no like oh. you don't get the satisfaction of oh i bought a new pedal it's like oh, i bought the same skins again just to <laughs> yeah. keep it you know and yeah. there's nothing new and we've yeah. said it it's like it is like a yeah i spent like 200 quid on skins the other day and i was like kind of can't see where the money's gone you can hear it i oh, know but yeah no it was it was cheap. just it was just, um, yeah, because they were so expensive, and because I hit them so hard, I I went, I was going through them so quickly when, I, especially when I was busy playing loads of gigs. Um, so I sort of found out about Code. I just sold them somewhere online. I kind of remember where. I was like, oh, this is cheaper. Looks cool. I sort of read a bit about it. Went on YouTube, watched a few videos, and yeah. So I bought them, and I've been using them mainly on my toms and my kick drum for yeah, loads of years before I got endorsed. And um, yeah, so the how I got in contact with Code was um, through Kieran Pepper. Mm. Um, he works for Waterbear now, and um, he was just in small and I was chatting about buying drum heads and stuff. And he was like, I know Mike from Code, you know, he'll be more than happy to have you on. I can just like make an introduction. And I was like, that'd be great. And then, yeah, Mike contacted me and we chatted on the phone. Great lad. And uh, he was like, yeah basically um we have to have you on and uh, i did say that i've been using code drum heads and that i really actually enjoy them and they sound really good uh cool and yeah we just sort of came about uh which was it's just actually i still 
you know, I can't wrap my head around the fact that I'm endorsed by Code and Natal. It's just, you know, such such an honor because uh, they're both great companies and, um, you know, the, the team of people I've been chatting to um, so far, they're just amazing and so helpful and, you know, I just want the best for you, basically. So, yeah, so, yeah quite re- really happy being well, part of both those teams. Yeah. Well deserved, I'm sure it is. Um, Thank you. Symbols. Should we discuss symbols before we move on? Uh, symbol uh, is my next dream endorsement. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I a... what have you got? But, I mean, oh, what is yeah, the dream endorsement? But... What would be the, the brand? So I've been using Minel for ever. Cool. My first ever uh, set of symbols that I bought, uh, my own, was Minel. And right. um, my ride is still the same ride that I bought seven years ago, which is mm-hmm. mad. All the other symbols mm-hmm. I went through definitely broke... Uh, Eight an inch twice, my sixteen inch once, and then I brought my hi hats and China, lots of Chinas that are broken. But I've just been using them because, uh, yeah, I, I. Well, again, if I'm completely transparent, the reason why I bought mine was they had this amazing deal. I, pay, I paid, I think, two hundred pounds for a six symbol set. It had like ride sixteen inch and eighteen inch crash hi hats splash and a China, um, and I was like, great. That's it. That's me. I'll yeah. just buy that. That's the um, whole package, isn't it? Really? Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. So I was like, a full dinner perfect. Set. Yeah. Forks, <laughs> exactly. knives, cutlery, spoons, teaspoons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, so I just got that, and then um, yeah, obviously because I'm I'm a little bit like I don't know, I don't want to say OCD because then that means that I have a OCD, but I don't. I just like things to look exactly the same. Yeah. So the idea of buying a different brand, sixteen inch crash. Whilst everything else is minor, it would just drive me crazy, which wow. might sound ben. insane. Yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> I had to, uh, I had to break that for myself. So I've Zildjian forever, and yeah. I've still got the same ride that I bought when I was sixteen. So I've had right. that ride for like twenty-one years. Wow. Um, but I, yeah, I think last year bought a Sabian Crash, so I I broke the Zildjian. Oh stranglehold and I, I just felt like i had to purely go on what sounds best yeah and i tried out shit loads of symbols and this that sabian crash was was the one for what i i needed it to do you can do mm. it daphne i believe in you, you can... i know i know i'm trying i'm really trying so hard um but yeah the thing I, the thing is i've used sabian as well and um so at small pond we have the studio symbol set which is the uh, HHX Groove Pack, I think, which is about 900 quid. But it's just, it has a 17 inch and a 19 inch crash, which is like literally, I think, the perfect sizes. Because I've been using 16 inch for ages. And then I tried the 17 ones and it just changed my world. I was like, I need this in my life. But yeah. it's just so expensive. So, you know, Sabian would be definitely between mine and Sabian um, that, you know, but they're both pretty good and I think they could serve me quite well with for what I want to be doing. And because I have ideally I'd want to have a set for Pidrip and a set of symbols for my session stuff and eight is hi fi and stuff like that. But you know, it just it costs so much, you guys. <laughs> it's just <laughs> literally it. it's just it's an invest it's a constant investment. Yeah. Drum heads, sticks, oh my yeah. god uh symbols uh yeah it's just it's just a constant investment it's like cases yeah. yeah cases oh my goodness see with cases i had i used to buy cheap symbol cases for years and obviously they would eventually break cuz you know i was using them so much and i kept avoiding by buying the mono cases cuz they were so expensive but one day I was like, I can't do this. I just, I'm just going to bite the bullet. I'm going to pay the 120 quid. And I'm going to have this case forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's, you know, it's since I bought the mono case and, you know, the amount of time has been thrown around the van or out of venue or it's been rained on or anything. It's just there. You do have to think like that. I, I spent a lot on cases and a hi-hat stand and it was like yeah and it is like nothing about this is cool like but it's i need it and i'll have it forever you know and it's just like yeah. it's it's almost that feeling of like oh i can't show it off i can't be like hey yeah this new case i've got you know <laughs> but like yeah. you still have to buy it yeah, yeah. no it's, it's a constant battle 
something I wanted to discuss um, mm -hmm. is, well, we had little backstory to this. We had, this is, I'm plugging someone else's book. We had an author on this show once and he spoke mm -hmm. about, he wrote this book about punk drummers and mm -hmm. he talked about female punk drummers. And there was this brilliant bit in the book where he talked about female drummers who, you know, grew up in the seventies and, uh, and they play gigs and there'll be instances of, I don't know, sound engineers thinking they couldn't hit it as hard as male drummers and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. I, I just wanted to ask about that because you're the first female drummer on the show. And I just wanted to know, you know, have there been incidences like that? Um, not in the extent that someone will tell me you're very good for a girl. Mm. Um, I've had loads of other um fellow female drummers that they've had that experience. Um, and I don't know if it has to do with the way I I, I appear. I've got short hair, mm. like baggy clothes. I don't know if that's that because, you know, you you know, there's the sexism part of it is, you know, you'll see a female like looking drummer yeah. and you instantly kind of go, oh, my God, there's a girl on the drums. It's just so like it's like it's a shocking thing, which I don't understand. Um, but I have had people, um, you know, in show, especially old men mm. that would come to the show and they're like, "Oh, you hit them hard, don't you?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, I do." Yeah. So what? <laughs> you know, and you know, it it could, you know, it's it's that sort of comment where you wouldn't you wouldn't make that comment to a male drummer. Mm. You just just wouldn't. But it hasn't happened, and. It does, it angers me so much because I've had, you know, I've had lots of my friends, even like female guitarists or like, you know, lots of my female friends are musicians that they've had experiences like that and worse than that before. Or, you know, you would go up, start setting up your stuff or starting plugging this stuff in and, you know, the sound engineer will come around and he'll be like, no, nah, let me do that. You don't know how to do that. You know, and it's just like, yeah, it's it's quite mad. Um, I mean, I you know personally, I haven't had this sort of experiences, thankfully, but you know there have been subtle comments. But I think I've been very res like you know I've responded straight away to that, and I think you know I didn't leave any room for any further comments in that sense, or they sort of you know make 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 the other person understand that you can't you cross the line, you can't say that. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, those sorts of things where they're not blatant and outright. If they're like, oh, you hit it quite hard, you kind of like. Is he taking the piss or is he? Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 exactly. Like, sort of subtle as well. No, exactly. it's what I'd ask because, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I don't know, it's something that both Ben and I have never experienced as yeah. old white men, you know. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's just an interesting topic to kind of, you know. Yeah, it is. Well. I mean, I think, I think it is getting better. And because there's so many more female drummers yeah. on the scene right yeah. now, which I absolutely love. Yeah. Um. You know, I don't think there's any room for anybody to, uh, I don't know, come in with sexist comments. Yeah. You know, there's still, you know, there will still be people that will say that and will think this way, or they'll be shocked that the drama is a female. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, you know, I, I think it is getting better, and I'm hoping one day it won't even be a thing. Yeah. Or even, or you know, even even the subtle comment of, oh, he's a drama, she's a female drama. Mm. why would you put the do you yeah. know what i mean yeah. even that yeah. like why can't you say oh the drummer of this band or the the female drummer why would you say the female drummer do you know what i mean well that, exactly because we were almost like hesitant to discuss it with you because we were saying mm. is it weird to say that that exact phrase you know i'm used to it like drummer, you, know? you know i have i have also had to you know when i first wrote my bio i had to say female drummer in it mm. just because for some reason is something that is uh i don't know yeah i don't know what it is yeah. um but you know i have used that for myself before mm. and um but yeah it doesn't mean that it's 100 percent right because it's just not right but it's just uh unnecessary in my yeah. eyes I'm just a yeah. drummer, you know. I'm just I'm just playing drums, same as every other drummer in the world. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. But unfortunately, the world we live in, it's just you know, labels exist quite a lot. So, yeah. People feel the need to use them in that sense. Anything else to discuss? I just where can people find you online? You know. Yeah. Um. So I'm on Instagram. 
um, uh, at DAF with D A B H and then COSK, K O S K. If if anybody has any inquiries for like shows or sessions or anything music related, um, we can find me on my email, which is uh, Daphne dot uh, which you can also find on my Instagram if you struggle spelling that, and it's at, at gmail dot com. And um, what else do I have? I don't really use. Actually, I I had the intention of having a Facebook page once in my life, and then I did it, and then it just sort of fade away because I just yeah. don't use Facebook no. for some reason. It's one of those things like Instagram seems to be the place to be right now mm. um, in terms of like promoting your music and your skills. Um, yeah, yeah I do yeah. also have a YouTube channel which I have um, some very old <laughs> and some. Oh, well, you know, relatively new drum covers that I did. Um, you know, if you just type my name on YouTube, Daphne Kuskaridu, we should come up. And uh, and what's next? Um, we get on have... the phone to Mino and Sabian. Yeah, yeah, I, I actually, I'm so, now, so I'm so close yeah. to emailing. Be like, please, <laughs> <laughs> please, I love your symbol sets. Give me free symbols. Um, but no. Um, so we have a very exciting year coming up with Kidrip. We're about to release our album, uh, a second album this year, which I'm super proud of and I cannot wait for the world to hear it. We're going to try and get more little festivals in uh, in the summer. And uh, yeah, mainly all my plans at the moment are with Bidrip. I'm hoping I can get some more session stuff in because uh, I do love doing that as well. But yeah, it's just a very exciting year ahead with little gigs and tours again. So um yeah, I'm excited for that. Go on, Ben. Ask the last question. Who's your favourite delivery company? Oh, wait. What, you mean Korea? Korea, yes. yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. That's a very good question. I'll have to say DPD, I think. Yeah, yeah, fair play. Yeah, yeah, strong choice. They're the most organised ones, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can track online, you can call them, they'll answer, you know? Any particular career you dislike have you had yeah, a bad experience or yes yodel or yodel oh, or how, the, okay, how yeah. the hell you pronounce it they're yeah. useless i'm sorry they once left i ordered hear this i ordered uh back in lockdown i ordered some weights some like plate weights um and because it didn't find me they left the box outside my house in the rain and the box was like ripped and stuff and i was like who does that <laughs> So why? <laughs> so yeah, yeah you know, on that, I think nah. it was Ben Thomas who said Yodel as well. He said that he ordered some shoes and they left them in a bin, and then people I know. put their own rubbish on top of it, and then the <laughs> bin got taken out, and then he never got the shoes. No. So yeah, that's oh, at least two for Yodel. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Fantastic. There's a reason. <laughs> I de- I deliberately left that. Oh, we get last night, Daf, when you were like, "Oh, what questions are you going to ask?" I was like, "I'm not going to tell her the, the final <laughs> question." I love it. I love I it. Best question. You yeah, because well, <laughs> every every single person never goes what they go. Ooh, it's a, it's yeah, a real, exactly. It's a real leveler. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, oh, thank you so much we'll, for having me. Was we'll a, put was links great. to all your great time. Uh, social media and and your bands and stuff. We'll put all that in the amazing and stuff and, and let us know when the um the album's out and we'll push that as well yeah and, we'll promote uh, thank you yeah definitely. pleasure to meet you thanks for coming i appreciate on. that guys you too yeah, thank you see you in the next 80s so, yeah take care have a good day yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cheers, bye. Bye. bye well that was our interview with daphne yeah go check out uh social medias and a band um yep. go check them out on tour because they tour a lot they do tour a lot and we will promote their second album when it comes out uh looking forward to hearing that because i did have a quick listen before we did the pod just to make sure i got the general vibe and uh yeah great band need to go and see them live we'll go to a gig you and i sure because i know what you love doing is you know (laughs) (laughs) going to a gig and see someone else's band yeah (laughs) standing at the front it's a really good song (laughs) that was great (laughs) you all did really well there if you're wondering what we're on about, go back to the other episodes. Christmas special, go check it out. Uh, you've got a gig coming up. I do, uh, with the artist currently known as Ren. Um, 
uh, at Icebreaker Festival in Portsmouth. Um, mm. We've managed to thankfully get quite a nice slot um, because Icebreaker Festival is basically, for those that don't know, a bit like the Great Escape in Brighton or South by Southwest. Camden Rocks. What? Camden Rocks. Yeah, Camden Rocks. There's one in Nottingham as well, I think, that I played last year. I can't remember what that's called. But basically, a festival where all the venues... It's like a area. city day festival, you know? Yeah. Get um, a wristband, you can go in all the venues, watch all the bands. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it so used to be Southsea Fest Did it. in Portsmouth. And that was usually in September. And then that stopped and Icebreaker has sort of taken over the mantle. I think Southsea Fest kind of got hit hard because Victorious started, mm. which was only like a week or two before yeah. Southsea Fest. That kind of killed it. And an icebreaker was like, let's do it in January, end of January. Well, this is what's weird, yeah. Because there's fuck all going on. There's nothing going on. But that's why. On. Yeah, But exactly. I think they're now even looking to do a summer one as well. Well, so. they, they could. But um, but we're playing Wedgwood Rooms, which is a great place to play. It's, and the, it's the best one. I, it? I didn't want to say it, but it is the best venue. And it's hilarious how we got it because Millie, she's basically Wren. We're just the musicians that play over Hired goons. Hired goons. She just said to the organizer, like, hey, I feel like our sound will work best in Wedge Drums. Can we do that one? And they were like, yeah, cool. We'll put you on at half eight, um, which is prime Absolute slot. Absolute prime time. And, Absolute uh, prime time. Perfect <laughs> to get dinner before or yeah. after. And also, if people are there all day, half eight is still like, oh, we can still watch them then get a train or whatever. Yeah. Whereas there's another band on afterwards at like, half 10 it's like it's too late people are like oh too no late. i've got to get last train back or whatever you know so um so yeah we're doing that i'm also that day playing with an artist called Mackenzie, who uh connor griffiths drums for and he got me in that day um playing at the wine vaults uh, yeah i don't know what time so if you're about in the day come and see me because i'll be there drumming for Various artists in the Portsmouth area. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's already hitting those heights so early in the year. <laughs> it's great to see. Uh, yeah. yeah, there you go. That's all I got to talk about. Yeah. You got anything going on? Nope. Cool. Well, thanks for listening. <laughs> thanks for listening. Go check out Daphne's stuff. Yeah. Um, and we'll be back next week. With another guest. We hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if not, be more of this shit. <laughs> but no, we do have a plan. We do have yeah. a plan. Vaguely. Sweet. Oh, nice one, Georgie boy. Nice Lovely one. seeing you. You too. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yep. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer. You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumanddrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twat it.